Hi, I'm Naomi Fitter, an assistant professor of robotics at Oregon State University, and I'm excited to share my recent work on robot comedy, as outlined in the paper, Comedians in Cafes Getting Data, Evaluating Timing and Adaptivity in Real-World Robot Comedy Performance. This paper is authored by myself and John Vilk. The intersection of AI and comedy goes back decades, but the state of the art can still leave something to be desired. We can see this, for example, in an interaction with Siri. Hey Siri, tell me a joke. Why did the meatballs tell the spaghetti to go to sleep? It was pasta bedtime. John is not amused. A key problem here is that current strategies for humorous AI rely heavily on puns and a few other types of formulaic joke, such as one-liners and that's what she said jokes. Don't you hate it when your robot is not funny enough? Don't you hate that? This gap led us to wonder about better robot comedy. Human comedians have tactics for good timing and using responses, often known as tags, to address audience reactions to a given joke. Accordingly, we wondered if we could design robot comedy with human-like adaptation skills. In addition to my day job as a robotics professor, I am a semi-professional stand-up comedian, so in the first phase of this design research, I sought to instill a robot with the typical strategies I use in my own performance through an iterative design process. These included jokes with setups and punchlines, written from a robot's perspective with suggestions from a Los Angeles area group of comedians, timing strategies ranging from fixed timing, similar to the commercial state of the art, to the final audio sensing strategy described in more depth in the paper, emotional positive and negative tags that could let the robot address whether or not the audience seemed to enjoy the previous joke. And all of this used onboard audio sensing only. In most comedy clubs, the performer cannot see the faces of audience members, and performers are typically not able to augment the space with any extra sensors. We incorporated all of these items into a now robot with an end result that is an autonomous robot that can perform stand-up comedy in almost any venue. The only assistance the robot needs is a human to hold the microphone up to its speaker. Now that we had an autonomous robot comedian with abilities inspired by human stand-up performance, the next step was to evaluate these skills. Live performance in pre-existing comedy venues offers a fitting and natural experimental setting. Thus, we decided to use these settings to evaluate our robot's humor strategies. Our first open-world study considered the effect of appropriate robot timing while telling jokes. Many current AI assistants and social robots wait a fixed period of time before continuing with their speech when telling jokes. But for more appropriate comedic timing, a robot should wait roughly as long as the onlookers laugh and then continue telling jokes. In this Between Audiences study, we considered 22 total performances, 12 in bad timing, and 10 in appropriate timing mode. Here's a video demonstrating each condition. You can probably tell from looking at me that I'm from the valley. <laughs> Silicon Valley. <laughs> You can probably tell from looking at me that I'm from the valley. <laughs> Silicon Valley. And here's a clip showcasing the timing findings. This one's for all my robots out there. Ha 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 ha. So funny. <laughs> You guys are great. When I told that joke to Alexa, she said, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> so human raters labeled each joke's success as positive, lukewarm, or negative, 
and a Kruskal-Wallis test comparing these ratings across the bad and appropriate timing conditions showed that a robot with good timing was significantly funnier. Our second open-world study considered the effect of post-joke adaptations, those tags that I mentioned previously. Current AI assistants and social robots tend to have a fixed setup punchline structure with fixed sequences of jokes. But a more effective approach can include capitalizing on a successful joke by telling more similar jokes, or rescuing a joke that falls flat with a witticism addressing the audience's response. In this Between Audiences study, we considered 10 total performances split between these non-adaptive and adaptive conditions. And here's a video demonstrating each condition there. Don't you hate it when you're trying to solve inverse kinematic sequations to pick up a cup, and then you get here 453, no solution found? Don't you hate that? <laughs> Don't you hate that? <laughs> I am glad you also hate that. <laughs> and here's a clip showcasing the adaptivity findings. These beauty standards are impossible. I'm thinking of getting plastic surgery. You know, where they epoxy more plastic to my exoskeleton. You see, because I am a robot, and made of plastic. So any modification to my exterior is plastic surgery. So there we see a joke falling flat and the robot explaining the joke as its negative tag strategy. Here, there were no statistically significant differences based on adaptivity across the performances as a whole, but follow-up tags by the robot, or adaptability, changed a negative or lukewarm audience response to a more positive one in 83.3% of cases. The public performance and scientific communication piece of this work has been a lot of fun, and now I run a quarterly robot-themed comedy variety show in Corvallis. You can learn more on our Facebook page, and we're beginning to tour as well, so this is the best place to see our upcoming dates and locations. Our autonomous robotic comedian, John the Robot, headlines this show in tours and other performances. John regularly rivals the audience responses elicited by top human performers in these showcases. Are you wondering, what's the deal with robot comedy? Come see John in action! Thanks for listening. I'd be happy to take any questions you might have about this work, whether it's remotely or next time I see you in person.